Thank you very much, Dominic. And I invite Christian to finish off the case for side proposition. <laughs> When you're enacting any piece of policy, whether it's banning something, spending more money on something, advocating something as a society, there's only really one thing you need to do, and that's to demonstrate that somehow the policy you're enacting leads to a better world or a better state after you've enacted that policy than the world which you had beforehand. It isn't good enough to say that drugs are bad or that they're something maybe moral actions on the part of people that are taking them, but you have to effectively prove that leads to a better outcome. We seem to be laboring under the misapprehension in this debate that somehow banning drugs leads to less drugs in our society, which is putatively untrue, right? Not only is it in complete contradiction to all the statistics we get from places like Portugal, where drug policies have been significantly relaxed and consumption has actually fallen, but also it just rankles with our basic intuition about why people use drugs. We think there are probably two types of people who use drugs. People, many of you are probably sat in this room, who like smoke weed or take MD and go to the warehouse, MDMA and go to the warehouse project, right? Those people are going to not stop taking drugs because one, it's completely unreasonable to criminalise them for something they only do to themselves, and two, because like it's kind of fun and they enjoy it and actually we're, admitting, we're actually limiting a freedom that people like. Second group of people that like to take drugs, people that have severe chemical addictions to things like heroin and cocaine. When you criminalise these things, it doesn't matter because their impulse is not what am I going to do if I have to go to court? It's, I need my fix of drugs, I'm going to take it whether or not it's criminalised. Like, criminalising these people is extremely harmful. I'm going to talk about it later in my debate because it prevents them getting access to some of the state services of which they're often in the most need. Before that, one or two points uh, responding to Dom on a few more of the more pernicious ideas that came out of his speech. Firstly, we have this kind of back and forth about crocodile or diamorphine, whatever you want to call it, right? So we think people that use those sorts of drugs, some of them are going to die whether it's criminalised or not. We think when it isn't criminalised, we think when it's legal to do that, we think of the, when people like Superdrug and Boots are able to produce these sorts of things and they say, this is the purity of this, this is the size of dosage, we think less people are going to die because we think one of the major causes of people killing themselves are things like crocodile and some of the more harmful opiates is that they just don't know what they're injecting into their own body. We've already established that they're going to do it whether or not it's criminal. What we'd like them to do, those people to be able to do is understand what they're doing to themselves so they can do it in a safe way and so they cannot kill themselves while they're doing it. Second point that Don made, the black market would still exists, and he gives us the example of tobacco. The reason why the black market exists in tobacco is because the government taxed the hell out of tobacco. No one goes out of their way to buy counterfeit cigarettes, which have bits of glass in, from a dodgy guy who's come across on a van from France, because they think it's kind of a fun way. No, thank you, of doing these things. They do it because it's incredibly expensive to buy it legally because the government overtaxes it. We don't think that when we introduce drugs into society in a sensible way, we're going to overtax it. Right, we think we're going to sell it at a reasonable rate, which doesn't incentivize people to buy it legally. The third thing Don says, and the, one, the thing I find most difficult to understand, is that the reason that drugs are so widely proliferated in society is because we're not fighting the drug war and we're not locking people up. If you want an example of locking people up for minor drugs offences, look at the United States, in which the legal system is an absolute clusterfuck because you have tons of young people, disproportionately from immigrant and ethnic backgrounds, which exacerbate already existing tensions, locked up for possessing things like marijuana and cocaine, right? The effects of which on the individuals that use them are often negligible. No, thank you. Right. Secondly, what does that? What does the criminalisation of small amounts of possession of drugs do? Well, it forces dealers to it, it use methods of fear to prevent people talking in the first place. At the point at which you criminalise people only for possession, dealers are then forced to do horrific things to anyone who they think is liable to talk in order to create a culture of fear whereby no one can inform on the really nasty people we ought to be getting, who are the actual dealers, people involved in things that are really, really harmful, like trafficking of people. Um, which is far more pernicious um, than something you have a basic human right to, such as taking drugs. Finally, um, the effects that Don talks about on others. Well, this you know, it tells us that drugs don't exist in a vacuum, and that actually when we take drugs, it affects other people. Well, firstly, he hasn't given us any mechanism by which banning these drugs would stop any of these people taking them anyway. And seeing as we've already heard of all the harms of why they're criminalised, I don't think I really care about the effects on other people, given that Dom hasn't explained to me how we're going to stop anyone taking it. Because drugs are already illegal, and people keep using and buying them. Right, onto the main points of my speech. I'll take your question now if you still have it. Um, yeah, what, what, what are the effects of legitimising the sale of drugs in these minority communities who are going to sell them anyway? What do I do as a young black guy well, if, if, if you legitimise the sale of drugs? Where, what, so, what else can I first, aspire to be? So firstly, I think uh, it would actually remove that opportunity for you in the first place. Because at the point at which, as a consumer, someone wanting to buy like cocaine, heroin, marijuana, 
Are you going to think shifty guy around the corner or super drug? I don't think you're going to go shifty guy around the corner. In the same way, I don't buy my Neutrogena hankery from a shifty guy around the corner. I buy it from super drugs, right? So I don't think that option is available to those people anyway. Right? On to the main parts of my speech, very, very quickly. Uh, individual, I'll skip individual liberty. There are no right wingers here, no one cares. Right. Harms to the developing world. Some of the places in, uh, where I'm from, in Jamaica, actually where my family are from as well, and South and Central America, are absolutely ravaged, not because drugs exist, but because they're illegal. When you, when you need to do something, such as producing large amounts of cocaine, you're naturally forced to go to somewhere where it's hot, and where it's like reasonably tropic, and also where law enforcement isn't very good. It naturally means you're forced to go to parts of the developing world which are already poor. Right? You can take over large swathes of the country, like happens with uh, FARC in Colombia, for example, and damage people's lives. But the externalities of those things are far, far wider. At the point at which companies who are looking to expand overseas see an opportunity in somewhere like South or Central America, um, and possibly a more developed expensive country in Asia, their hand is forced to go to somewhere which is already more developed, rather than the place that really needs investment, like, say, Mexico or Colombia, because of the instability engendered by the fact that we funnel massive amounts of monies into criminal organisations because of the illegality of drugs. I think it's really, really harmful that we prevent those developing countries from having access to foreign investment and the sorts of money that will allow them to build up educational infrastructure and a better police force and a better security because we funnel money towards criminal organisations, because we ban legitimate organisations from producing these things. Finally, what does this policy do to the most vulnerable people in our society? And I'll finish on this point. I think we all agree that addicts are among the most vulnerable people, right? Statistically, they're disproportionately likely to suffer from violent assault, poverty, homelessness, and a range of other terrible things. We think the point at which you say someone, by their existence of being a heroin addict, they may have been put on that by, uh, for example, someone in self sexual services, they may have been brought up in a society in which that was encouraged. We think when you criminalise that sort of individual, you make it so difficult for them to engage with a state which is wanting to reintegrate with them into society. When shelter, a homelessness charity, say they can't fill up all the beds despite there being so many homeless people because homeless people are scared to engage with any legitimate organisation because of the fear that they will be incarcerated, we think it's incredibly harmful on a very personal level that people who are homeless, people who are disproportionately likely to be victims of crime, cannot engage with the state because we've criminalised them for something which is often not their fault. We want a policy which says you're not a criminal if you've fallen into that sp spiral and that habit, and that actually you can come forward and use the healthcare services which you need, use the state services which you need, and actually be able to reintegrate yourself back into the mainstream of society and afford somewhat a meaningful life going forward. For all of the reasons that both Joe and I have brought you, I beg you to propose. Thank you. is the opposition's attempts to claim that legalising drugs will lead to like, greater overall drug consumption uh, and that will have significant harmful effects on society. Why is this not true? One, because they haven't told us like, what type of individual or, or who actually really responds to whether or not drugs are illegal. We think a far more reasonable approach is that the reasons that individuals don't do drugs are more related to the fact that you know, they don't want to have you know, a criminal record, for example, or they don't want it to impact on their ability to work and lots of other things. We don't think that people think, oh no, it's, it's illegal, I'm going to get a slap on the wrist, I'm not going to smoke marijuana. We also don't think that severely addicted people uh, are going to stop taking drugs because it's already illegal and they, and they still take it. But one or two things that we've had in the discussion and the current speech which haven't been responded to. We get this idea that, you know, even when you legalise drugs and you regulate them, they're still kind of dangerous. Yeah, but they're far less dangerous. We've already established that just as many people are going to take drugs under either model. We'd rather have them where they're partly regulated so people at least have some idea of what they're taking. But on top of that, things like crocodile are just going to go away. Why would you take crocodile when you can go to Boots and get like some proper heroin? Like, it's probably going to be a better high, and it's probably not going to make your skin fall off and kill you. But like, anyone with any ounce of rationality, even an addict can make that like, decision, like crocodile from Shifty Guy, heroin from Boots. Um, okay, what else do I need to mention just in summation? Uh, Calvin didn't respond to my question about alcohol. I think partly because he was too quick to wave me down and didn't listen to it. But he gives us this idea that when you make drugs uh, legal, you're not going to kind of corner the market in legitimate means because people are going to go over and beyond that and create these drugs that are even more potent. My question to do with alcohol is you can already do that. No one here goes out and buys 85% absinthe because they can get a vodka Red Bull and it's actually pretty good and it's not going to make you go blind or some other weird stuff. Right? Um, 
On this side of the house, we've given you all of the harms you get. It's harms to the most vulnerable people in society, people who need to get, engage with access to the state. It's harms to people in developing countries whose countries are ravaged by drug gangs. It's harms to uh, policing systems which are ineffective and unable to tackle things because they are hamstrung by the amount of money they have to spend on prosecuting this. Right? If you care about any of those groups of people and how to ameliorate, ameliorate their situation, make their lives better, and allow them to do something which is fundamentally a right to do, um, then you have to vote proposition. Thank you.